talk on industrial symbiosis, on hubs for circularity, and on merging all that you do in capture, uh, climate and resource neutrality, all together, the ambitions of Europe, the ambitions of industry, and the ambitions of academia. So Jan already introduced myself. Um, I'm a bit of an example of symbiosis between academia and industry, and I think you will hear it throughout this talk. I'm not alone. Francisco is with me. She, he is uh, part uh, in our ECM research group, which is um, energy and cluster management. And he is at the core of the work around industrial symbiosis and specifically on hubs for circularity. So it's a Friday afternoon. Let's get let's get a bit of, of word game in um, because here um, around industrial symbiosis, there is there is quite a long way that we go back. Um, all has merged into circular economy and into industrial clustering today. But we will give you a bit of history and go uh, have a look into the old Greek roots of symbiosis. And then, of course, the academic field of industrial ecology, what our research group is doing there. And then we will soon see that there is too many names for symbiosis. So maybe we can recycle a bit from the past to reinvigorate the future. So circularity, symbiosis, clustering, the circular economy, like Europe has put it forward a few years ago now, it's all about the four R's, reduce, reuse, recycle and recover. And if you bring those four R's in a circle, you make the value chain as we know it today quite straightforward into a loop. And that value loop is something that we will work around. Today, it's even not industrial symbiosis anymore. It is called um, urban industrial symbiosis. UIS, which is a European flagship within the European circular economy strategy with a focus on processes for planet, which is again a public private partnership within Aspire with a, a concept of a core concept of hubs for circularity. But again, it is all meant to, to help, to support, to enable, to facilitate the clean and circular economy that we all know. So let's get a bit of, of history into this talk. Um, and those of you who have done Greek, Old Greek, know that symbiosis comes from symbios and synergy, which is often used as well, comes from synergon. And living and working together in relationships that are mutual, that is really of all times. And one of the most important examples of it are economies of scale and scope. Scale when you size it, scope when you focus it on a certain team. So that history going back a long, long way and having its grounds even in biology, that history of working together, of bringing resources together, of being of use to someone else's waste is something that goes back many, many, many years. It has been with us for decades. And just there is just a small history on the screen, starting in Kalunburg, and that is not by accident. Kalunburg is a Danish um, industrial park, and even long before the name Industrial Symbiosis was born, um, Kallenberg already put up a link between a lot of companies, a lot of companies that work together and that made those links in bring resources from one um, and waste from one uh, company to the other to become the feedstock for another company. Now, I say it's a long time ago, it's about 50 years ago, um, and the name Industrial Symbiosis even didn't exist then. So, um, from the moment that name came up, Kallenberg became, became a textbook example of it and was used ever since in every single presentation on industrial symbiosis. And from then onwards, um, we have some decade stray, um, de decades um, focal points like uh, the Brundtland report on uh, sustainability, bringing in the triple P um, bottom line. Elkington then with his cannibals um, with forks, as you probably all know. Lower 
bringing the concept of industrial symbiosis and industrial economy into um, um, the academic field, and then the Journal of Industrial Ecology coming on with a lot of examples on industrial symbiosis. And then from the millennium onwards, many authors have jumped onto it. Um, and nowadays also governments like Europe, as I said, with its circular economy strategy. So where are we then with the research group on energy and cluster management? Well, um, quite early in that history, we come on board since 1998. Um, we have tried to combine anything that happened in the environment with entrepreneurship, with innovation and with collaboration. Um, so it started all off with energy and resource management um, at the very start in business parks and industrial sites and nowadays also in cross-sectoral clusters, meaning that sectors, different companies from different sectors are starting to talk to each other and actually work together. And this is, there is a lot of examples, I'll give them to you in a minute, um, but you can easily think that regions are more placed or more um, put forward as symbiosis regions, such as hubs, such as ports, such as districts um, in certain areas uh, of Europe. But the main thing is that it's simply not only on engineering, it's not only a technical matter, it's not the models or the tools not even the system thinking that is core to its all. The multidisciplinary um, research that is linked into industrial symbiosis demands also that we talk to our economists, to people with legal background, to people with spatial design um, skills, um, and, and of course also society or societal um, skills. So within the research group, we actually break open that idea of purely looking at an engineering exchange of waste and resources. But we also look at legal aspects, economic drivers, um, spatial design, where how are we located? Is it possible even uh, to collaborate and to, to make sure that the streams are exchanged? And since lately, as I said, also uh, from a societal point of view. And there is many projects that we work on. I'll come to them in a minute. But it's not only the research area that looks into symbiosis, as I said, it definitely is also very strongly embedded in industry. And you have heard in the introduction that I work for INEOS, I work at global level, so for INEOS across the world, um, and my role is to bring climate, energy and innovation into every single business and every single site worldwide into INEOS. So, this is exactly what we do, and one of the most important and most um, triggering things that chemical sites do, and this is an example on the screen of uh, the port of Antwerp, the Zweendrecht site of um, INEOS, where you can actually see that a part of it is only INEOS and all the rest around it is third parties that take the resources from uh, the INEOS factory and um, INEOS oxide site and, and bring them again to give them a new life. This is a typical chemical cluster and chemical clusters are around for a long, long time. So in essence, this Zweendrecht site is part of the port of Antwerp and the port of Antwerp is a bigger cluster even um, with in which the Zweendrecht site is a cluster. So you can see that chemical and energy um, sectors are very, very much interlinked. They interact with each other. They have projects together. Typical for symbiosis is that you cannot do it alone. So you have to join uh, forces. You have to collaborate with other partners to make um, the chain that we have in our value a loop. Power to methanol, waste to products, CO2 into variety of applications. It's only some that that's only some examples of uh, what is being done in Antwerp. Um, but bigger things are district heating or steam networks, uh, pipelines that bring resources across uh, the different regions of Europe, for instance. So back to from industry to academia and having a little look of, of what symbiosis then all is. And I've said at the intro. Um, it goes by many names. It's with us for many, many years already. The word cloud only gives you a glimpse of what 
industrial symbiosis is. But when we started looking into it just before the millennium, um, ECM, the research group, started to call it interfirm collaboration, looking at small companies on business parks, if they could do something together, which would bring a win-win to both sides, to each side. And we started naming what possible activities you could have, where you could have collaboration. And this is an endless list. It's, it's, it's a really long list of things that you can do. And other than what you see in capture, it's much more than only resources. It's, it's much more than only waste. It can only be services. It can only be something social, like bringing soup not only for your company, but bringing it for a set of company ar companies around you. So that collaboration and joint contracts and um, ways to share um, the economic benefits through a variety of activities is something that it it's it's logical in nature and now it starts to become logical in industry as well. As I said at the very at the very first stages, we called it business park management, and now I'm going back really around uh, 2000. Um, but the funny thing is that what we did and what we see is that a bunch of companies at a certain moment see a benefit in getting aligned on a certain team. And that theme is giving them quite a boost in economics, but also in societal, in, in, societal, in, in, in environmental uh, performance, which makes that they are interested in growing that collaboration into a system that aligns them and that brings them together. And in essence, it brings a win-win. It brings um, value added for each of the companies in that cluster. And this can originate from a wish. It can originate from a need or from a duty. A wish when you really want to do something together. A need when, for instance, you're technically linked to each other and you have to collaborate, for instance, with a sewer system that is together. Or a duty when it, that sewer system, for instance, ends up with a treatment, a water treatment plant, and that treatment plant has to be run, but it runs on everyone's affluent. So you need to abide by the norms and the standards that are given in your permit. So it means in essence that this cluster management on all these aspects needs to find a collaboration, a participation of everybody and it means that you have to work towards participation management. And then we move away from the engineering part and we go into a much more softer um, language and soft, softer study. So back in 2005, after some seven years of uh, studying and research projects, we have tried to come up with drivers and pitfalls of participation management. And again, as I said at the very start, we started with legal, economic, spatial, technical boundaries for collaboration and for symbiosis. And now for a while now, we very much know that social and societal aspects are really important as well. So the moving forces for actually working together is always when an industry is involved, costs. And I've already mentioned economies of scale and scope, but it can also be a legislation and legislation today is a legislation of carrots and sticks. You get an incentive when you actually do something or you get a fine when you don't. And that can be a trigger for collaborating, it can be a trigger for working together. But it could also be that it's simply a wish of having a more attractive working climate and then it's image building. Or it can be that someone is really a facilitator and brings creativity, brings innovation into um, a cluster of companies. Now here on the right, you can see the PPP um, triangle. You can see the um, People Planet Profit triangle, the, the triangle of um, economics, um, environment and society, which is the basis of sustainability. But you can also see that it's not, um, an, an, it, it's a distorted triangle. Why is that? Because in industry, the economic pull of sustainability is high and when the economics come on board you have the ecologic 
aspects that come in. And nowadays, um, environmental issues are very, very much at the forefront of symbiosis as well. And we can also see that slowly but certainly, as I said, societal aspects come in. And those societal aspects have, um, well, in the meantime, are getting a real big emphasis also in European uh, legislation and in the European circular economy strategy. But you can also see that there is a lot of barriers and pitfalls, the ones that we have uh, researched, of course. Um, one of the most important things is free riders. You can imagine if this is um, um, nine companies in a cluster that and that cluster would go for, um, I don't know, access control, that access control is at the boundary of the cluster and this company in the middle is a company that actually doesn't have to participate. Um, so if it decides not to do that, it's called a free rider because the eight companies around it are paying for the benefit of the middle one. And also, uh, there is a lot of theories and a lot of methods to, to look for um, what incentives are needed to get all the participants in the cluster working on the same theme. Um, one of them is the game theory. You have to have a look at it um, if you did not yet, because it's not because there is a logical win for each party that you will actually step into a cluster. Anyway, lots of data, lots of trust needed, lots of competition around. So it's a system that takes time and it's something that um, is gaining importance and is also gaining interest in industry. But we need all to know that it, it, it must go from a sharing economy to a caring economy. We have to take into account the wishes of other companies as well. So not only the organic growth of business deals in a one-to-one -one or one-to-many situation, we really have to come um, to, to looping, to closing the loop and take social responsibility on what we are doing. Now, I promised you that I would give you a few cases, but the cases will be very much on names because symbiosis goes by many names, too many names, if you ask me. Um, and you will for sure uh, know that most of those names you have heard already a longer time. I've mentioned already at the very start back in the 1990s, we called it park management, business park management, typical for Flanders. But there is also the name improvement districts when you really take urban or city areas um, with you, or when you go for uh, spatial design with green zones, etc., like uh, Campus Ardoyen, um, which is the science park of Ghent University itself. Or um, if it's just citizens working together and trying to invest in renewables, um, then you can go for a multi-stakeholder uh, cooperative. And again, this is a symbiosis between a lot of citizens here, but with an industry who makes it happen. If the focus is on uh, reducing carbon emissions, then we go to large, low carbon uh, business parks and low carbon business parks in Flanders have a decree and um, get subsidized. So it could be that a political incentive is at the basis of it. One of the most lovely ways um, of symbiosis in industry with together with cities around is district heating and district heating networks, which you all know and which you know are rising uh, these days. But you can also have that same district heating network in a steam network um, environment and only in industry. For instance, the Ecluse um, network in the port of Antwerp. And the port of Antwerp is just an example like the port of Zeebrugge, the port of Ghent, the port of Rotterdam, wherever you want to look. Green ports today are ports that move towards a full resource um, integration of all the companies in it. We don't have to stay within Flanders, we don't have to stay within Belgium. Um, Germany is very known for its Einverbund, and that Einverbund is typically an energy network um, amongst different companies in a cluster. Or the Netherlands, where um, carbon networks exist. Um, here you can see a Rotterdam area, and there is a pipeline that wasn't used anymore towards uh, Amsterdam, and it brings the CO2 from the Rotterdam port area all the way up the 100 kilometers up to Amsterdam, feeding into the greenhouses um, that it passes along the line. So 
this too is a collaboration of many partners um, making a symbiosis of um, an emission from one end to a resource, a use of a stream at another end. The UK, for instance, um, you must have heard of NISP. Um, now it's called International Synergies, but this is a platform um, to have waste streams on it. And it's a platform that um, collects waste streams from companies and combines it with companies that may have a need for it. And there is Stendung um, The more we go to the Scandinavian areas, the more we move into eco-industrial parks in a full integration here in Stendung in Sweden um, on resources. And then, as I already said at the start of this presentation, um, Kalunburg um, Industrial Symbiosis with a real um, textbook example of a full integration of every single company on the site with the uh, linked cities around the site. And this is it. As I said, for about more than 50 years already, um, this industrial clustering is ongoing. Uh, the reuse of resources is ongoing. The closing of loops is ongoing with chemical clusters as a major example, but it doesn't mean that we cannot do more. So what we do in the research group as well is recycle the past and reinvigorate the future with everything that has grown organically we can learn so much from it and we can put it again in practice and we can start um, feeding into these collaborations of all possible um, of all possible resources, of all possible waste streams, of all possible emissions and try to find a reuse for it. And I've already given uh, the full integration as um, third parties on a chemical site in the port of Antwerp. But what Europe has done now is bring this to a level of a full integration of not only industry, but also society. And the flagship within the ASPIRE partnership that has been put in, um, to life is um, Processes for Planet and the core theme of processes for planet is hopes for circularity and that is one of the key research projects that we have today it's also uh, something that we have a uh, master thesis on etc it's um, a concept that needs development not only from a what stream can we exchange point of view but also uh, from a purely geographically uh, point of view where ha where are those clubs uh, hubs how can we build those clusters how can we focus those clusters on the specific resources that they have and that they need. So how can we combine the best way of collaborating, of collaboration between uh, companies, not only of the same sector, but also of other sectors? One of the major projects, but I'm not going to into the details of it because this would bring us too far. Um, and I, I would love to have some questions from your side. But one of the main projects we have had was Horizon 2020 project is just finished. And in that project, we have seen that there is a tremendous lack of will, of um, openness of industry to share data. And all you need for industrial symbiosis is actually sharing data. So in that project, we have made blueprints of various sectors and those blueprints are virtual sector profiles and they give you an insight of how a, a typical chemical stream, a typical steel process, a typical cement plant, a typical mineral plant is run and how the streams that the that the demand and supply between um, such companies can be organized. Those blueprints give you an insight of what potential symbiosis can be put into place. The same but for SME networks is in the BICEPS project. Um, a thesis project together with ASPIRE was on hubs for circularity and we have developed a tool that actually puts geographically um, a, visualiza a visualization of where you can have hubs across uh, Europe. And now we're working in ATRES and in Trilate to bring um, energy demands and energy infrastructure between um, the hubs so that you can um, exchange energies and energy today in uh, uh, molecules as well as electrons point of view. 
And um, yeah, there is many interesting platforms in Europe, like Catalistian and um, in Flanders, like Catalistian and Flux50, um, which inspire such symbiosis projects and which, uh, if you don't know them yet, have not So to come to an end, um, what we do from an academic point of view, but also from an industry point of view, is uh, try to, to close that loop and make it um, quite a strong uh, helix, more than just a triple helix, um, a credible helix, because we bring um, not only academia and industry together, but also government and society. And industrial symbiosis and circular economy is a perfect platform for doing that. So um, in essence, um, we add a fourth um, graphic to this scheme because we need to work together and we need to bring the different views, yin and yang, together to make sure that we can actually talk to each other and that we find a common understanding on something that in first instance is not seen as a communality. And then that wish, that need, that duty can be put into practice and can make us actually help um, develop much further the industrial symbiosis and the circular economy projects that we have in mind. I leave it um, with that. If you want to contact us, please contact Francisco. He is in the room or contact myself. Um, you can find us quite easily through ecm.ugent.be.